Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks for our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating a key concept in behavioral finance and behavioral empirical finance in particular, that is herding. Does the stock market herd, that is, flock together, especially in the periods of notable market volatility? Do investors disregard individual companies' fundamentals and just go along with the overall market signal or with the opinions of analysts or key influencers? Well, turns out there is a very simple and intuitive empirical procedure that can help you test for that using market data. And these two methods that we're going to investigate today are the cross-sectional standard deviation and the cross-sectional absolute deviation. To apply this method, we need to get the data on the behavior of the stock market index, and here we have got S&P 500, and we've got it for a two-year period from end of November 2018 to end of November 2020. And we also need to get data on a reasonably wide sample of stocks from various sectors to test whether there are any signals of herding present. Obviously, in an ideal case, it would be the best to get all stocks that are traded on this particular market, but you can do reasonably well with just limiting yourself with a uh, set of stocks that everybody knows about and that are traded from various sectors. So here we have got Apple, ExxonMobil, Tesla, Caterpillar, Johnson Johnson, Pfizer, Goldman Sachs, and Boeing. And we will determine whether the cross-sectional standard deviation and the cross-sectional absolute deviation of the returns of these stocks does show any prominent signs of herding uh, with regards to the S&P 500, especially in the periods of notable market volatility. As we all know, in the early parts of 2020, there has been some very prominent volatility on the market in general. So this sample period is very useful in determining herding effects in investor behavior. To start with, we just have to calculate daily stock returns for individual stocks and market at large. So we apply the simple formula, price today divided by price yesterday minus one. And we drag this across all of our stocks and the market index as well and apply it for all days in our sample. Now we can calculate our cross-sectional standard deviation of our, and our cross-sectional absolute deviation. For cross-sectional standard deviation, we need to calculate what is the deviation on average of stock returns from the market return at every particular day. To do that, we just need to sum square, so sum the squared deviations of the returns of stocks from the return of the market. Then we need to divide it by n minus one, so the number of stocks minus one. And then we need to take the square root of that to get standard deviation and not variance. And that will tell you on average how far does the return of an individual stock deviate from the return of the market in every single day. So basically this figure could indicate whether there is herding in the market, whether there is synchronization of trading signals and disregard for individual stocks fundamentals, or whether everything is behaving as it would be expected according to the rational investor hypothesis. Keep that in mind. If this cross-sectional standard deviation decreases when the markets move up or down significantly, it would mean that when there is notable volatility, investors forget about what these stocks are individually and just treat them according to the overall market signal or opinions of key influences of the trading industry or the investment industry. So relating this cross-sectional standard deviation to the movement of the market can detect herding potentially or can prove that there is no herding and the market is behaving rationally. Because what can you expect rationally to occur is this cross-sectional standard deviation to be actually associated positively with market volatility. As when there is something very notable and prominent shaking the market, you might expect that different stocks are impacted differently by this across-the-board volatility. For example, in the episode of high market volatility in March and April 2020, there were some notable losers, especially 
energy stocks and consumer discretionary stocks, but there were also some notable winners like Amazons and Zooms of the world. So if this cross-sectional standard deviation does increase after overall market volatility, you can reason that the market is rational. If, on the other hand, the relationship is inverse, most prominently on the very tails of the market return distribution, then there is some herding going on, almost definitely. So we can calculate it for all trading days of our period by bottom like clicking this formula all the way down, and then we can relate this cross-sectional standard deviation to the right tail and the left tail of our market return distributions. And this is exactly the approach that Christian Huang suggests in their 1995 paper where they have first proposed the regression of the cross-sectional standard deviation on dummy variables that signal the right tail and the left tail of our market return distribution. Here there is some arbitrarity involved in defining what the right tail and the left tail are, but we can suggest a reasonable percentile and then see whether our results change when we select a different percentile for the tails. So first of all, let's start from the 95th percentile for the right tail and 5th percentile for the left tail and calculate the exclusive percentiles for the market return by applying the exclusive percentile formula. And we need to apply the 95th percentile for the right tail and copy this formula and apply the 5th percentile for the left tail. And we can see that we can define our extreme positive market movements if the return is greater than or equal to 1.86%, and analogously, the left tail would be if the market return is less than or equal to minus 2.59%. So in here we can code two respective dummy variables that would signify uh, whether we are on the right tail or on the left tail of the market return distribution by applying the if function. So if the market return is greater than or equal to this right tail return, and we need to lock that across, then we are in the right tail, so we need to input 1 and 0 otherwise, just as you code dummy variables usually. And then for the left tail, it's very similar, so we can just copy this formula across and tweak it. So if the market return is less than or equal to the left tail return, we input 1, so bear market and zero otherwise. And then we can bottom right click both of those dummy variables all the way down and proceed with the Christian Huang cross-sectional standard deviation regression. Here we need to regress our cross-sectional standard deviation onto those two dummy variables that are up and down, so the right tail and the left tail. So we can apply the Linus function by selecting a 5 by 3 array and applying Linus regressing our cross-sectional standard deviation onto these two dummy variables. And again, if those coefficients on the dummy variables are negative and significant, we can already detect herding going on, and if they are positive, we can then reason that the market behaves rationally, with cross-sectional standard deviation increasing with market volatility. So regressing it onto those two dummy variables and inputting one for the constant and one for additional statistics, we can enforce Linus with shift control enter and get our regression output here. So here we have got our coefficients for those two dummy variables and we can see they are positive. Are they positive and significant? Can we presume that the market is rational from this model output? To check that, we need to apply t-test for those coefficients. So calculating t-stats by dividing the coefficients by the respective standard errors given by the Linus template. And we can already see that for those two dummy variables, we have got respectable t-statistics that are almost 6 and almost 7. Those are much higher than the usual rule of thumb threshold of 2. But to be absolutely sure, we can apply the two-tailed t-distribution uh, and in inputting the absolute value of the t-statistic and the respective degrees of freedom with column locked over here. And we can extract p-values that would allow us to test the hypothesis of these coefficients being significantly positive or significantly negative directly. And here we got our p-values that are very, very close to zero, meaning that it's very, very unlikely that these coefficients are po positive uh, by random chance alone. So we can see that in the Christian Huang cross-sectional standard deviation regression, the market seems to behave rationally with no signals of herding. Cross-sectional standard deviation increases in the left tail and in the right tail, suggesting that 
investors do not head towards the market signal or the opinions of key influencers. But it has been argued since that the cross-sectional standard deviation is not the most powerful test to detect heading, and Chang et al. in 2000 suggested the cross-sectional absolute deviation regression. And it differs in two key ways. First of all, the indicator of the cross-sectional differences in returns is the absolute deviation instead of standard deviation, and the model specification is non-linear. Here we can see that in the regression, we do include the market return, the absolute market return, and the squared market return as independent variables to check for non-linearities between the cross-sectional absolute deviation and the market volatility. And what we are looking for here is just the coefficient B3 that relates cross-sectional absolute deviation to squared market return. It checks for non-linear dynamics of heading behavior. And we would expect that if heading is present, this coefficient would be negative and significant. Cross-sectional absolute deviation would be much smaller when the market moves significantly up or significantly down. And if the market is rational, you would expect this to be significantly positive. And uh, Chang et al. argue that this model is much more powerful and it allows you to detect heading with much greater precision. So let's do just that. Let's calculate the cross-sectional absolute deviation for our stock returns from the market return by applying the average of the absolute deviation of returns of our stocks from Apple to Boeing from the market return represented by S&P 500. And we need to enforce this using shift control enter because that's uh, arguably a matrix formula. And the cross-sectional absolute deviation here is 1.56%. Uh, quite similar, but smaller than the cross-sectional standard deviation given by the procedure of Christian Huang. And now we can bottom black look it all the way down and see what is the cross-sectional absolute deviation in every single observation of our two-year period. And now we need to get our explanatory variables uh, of the Chang et al. regression, input in market return, just referring to S&P 500, absolute market return, calculating the absolute value of the market return, and squared market return, just squaring it basically. And then we can, again, bottom black click all our three explanatory variables and proceed to estimating the Chang et al. cross-sectional absolute deviation regression. Again, we have got a Linus template, but here we have got four coefficients, the intercept and three explanatory variables, and we are most focused on that one, the squared return. So we apply the Linus function. Here, our dependent variable is cross-sectional absolute deviation. And our explanatory variables are those three, market return, absolute market return, and the squared market return. And then we need to input a constant. We need to input the additional statistics for standard errors and uh, degrees of freedom. And we enforce this formula using shift control enter. And here we can see our Linus template working for us. And now we can apply the T stat to figure out whether our relationships are significant or not. We can just copy this T test template from over here because we have defined our references properly, it will calculate T stats and P values using the relevant uh, figures. And here we can drag it across for all our four coefficients, but the main one we're looking for is this one, the squared return. And we can see that as if the heading hypothesis predicted, the coefficient is negative, but it's not significant enough. So we cannot rule out the possibility that this coefficient is zero and it is negative by random chance alone. However, here we can already see that the cross-sectional absolute deviation has allowed us to get some hint towards heading existing on this particular market over this particular time period, while the cross-sectional standard deviation was not picking up any signs at all, suggesting that the market was overly rational. However, we have got a small sample of just a handful of stocks over just two years, perhaps a test with a higher statistical power, looking at hundreds of stocks over multiple years, would allow us to arrive at a more precise result. However, this simple template allows you to understand what heading is, how to test for it using behavioral empirical finance techniques, and cross-sectional standard deviation, and cross-sectional absolute deviation, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two techniques? Namely, that the cross-sectional standard deviation is easier to implement, while the cross-sectional absolute deviation allows you to test for non-linear dynamics between herding and market volatility.
And that's all there is for detecting herding on stock markets using cross-sectional absolute deviation and cross-sectional standard deviation. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any suggestions for further videos on business economics or finance you would like me to record. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.